Uh, you know, the first time, the first time I heard, we, we were just singing Part Time Lover by Stevie Wonder. That's what one does. The first time I heard Higher Ground was unfortunately. Red Hot Chili Peppers. The Chili Peppers song <laughs> on the Mighty Morphin Power Rangers movie. They're, they're rollerblading. Uh, and I was, first of all, when I was a kid, that was the coolest fucking scene ever. Mm-hmm. They're wearing like, they're they're wearing their clothes coordinate with we, what each Power Ranger is as it usually did, right? And uh, they're just flying through the city. At, this is after they have already skydived, right? Of course. They've skydived, and Tommy or Jason, sorry, no Tommy, because Jason's the Red Ranger, the mm-hmm. the former leader until sexier Jason comes in or Tommy comes in. Who was the White Ranger again? Tommy's the White Ranger. Okay. Slash Green Ranger. Green Ranger. Yeah. So he starts off evil. Does he come as the back? Green Ranger. Does, does he come back like Gandalf? He comes back like Jesus. He dies as the Green Ranger <laughs> and comes back as the White Ranger. <laughs> okay. <laughs> and uh, and um, Zordon, of course, closes the uh, big rock, the rock in front of him. Yeah. yeah. And then the Power Rangers discover him three days he's later. Not there. Yeah. And, and he yeah he floats down. That's the White and Ranger. He's the White Ranger. Nice. And so and then he be and then he's the White Ranger going forward. <clears throat> so they're all rollerblading in in their color coordinated clothing, mm-hmm. their denim and their their elbow pads, wrist pads, gloves, knee pads, the whole nine. Yeah, the palm protectors. Yes. And as they're flying through, uh, fuck, what is their city called? It's just some made up city. Mm-hmm. God damn it! Ah oh, man, I wish I had that reference offhand. Yeah. They're flying through the city. <clears throat> And they're listening, and and what's what's being played is Angel, uh, Angel Grove. Grove. That's right, Angel Grove. And that's what's being played. And I was like, this song's awesome. <laughs> this is- this slaps. And then when I got a little bit older and I heard the actual song from Stevie Wonder, I hated myself <laughs> for so long. I was this like, sounds old. <laughs> no, I listened to it and thought this is so much better. Yeah. This version mm-hmm. is like a thousand times better i can't believe that i thought the chili peppers version was like the top tier version of I that mean, song as far as covers go it's a good cover no yeah it is it, it is it is i think that i've the older i've gotten the more curmudgeon i've gotten with with covers yeah where i'm just like leave it alone we had an entire cover conversation yes and that one is definitely a passable cover i mean i still it's still a good song they reworked it in a way that like the dumb kid that I was had never heard the original song. You would think, Oh, this is a, just a chili pepper song. It just works. It just works really well. Yeah. So you got to give anybody who does a cover, you got to give them credit where, when they can rework it in a way that just doesn't even sound like the, the original song. Yeah. But still. Yeah. I mean, if you're going to compare the two. Yeah. Come on. Yeah. So I just, just been thinking about that and I had to get that off my okay. chest of how dumb I felt <laughs> as a kid. Thinking, oh man, that Chili pepper song, that higher They're, ground. They got something going there. Just like, just imagine listening to that song and being like, "This is a masterpiece." Like they're mm. they're incredible, incredible musicians. Yeah, the songwriting on this impeccable, impeccable. Yeah, of course. Like, yeah, they belong in the Hall of Fame. Mm-hmm. They don't belong in the Hall of Fame. Oof. I'm kidding. I'm Rough. kidding. We've gotten past that. Mm-hmm. I had a whole issue with that, but we've gotten over that. They belong in the Hall of Fame. Thank you. <laughs> they do. And thank you, Chili Peppers. Their their con- contributions to, the, I was about to say their contributions. Contributions. The contributions to rock and roll mm-hmm. can't be understated. Yeah. yeah, 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 yeah. All right, ladies and gentlemen, thank you for uh, um, humoring me for the first five minutes. Uh, I had to get that off my chest, and now we've got to get some beer inside of us and we've got to get this show on the road please but the only way to do that is to first introduce what we're having tonight so please obi tell the people what we're drinking we have the jester king lagered farmhouse beer brewed and bottled in austin texas uh this is a 5.5 percent abv and we have a read but not just any read it is not a cold read because Marco asked me specifically to read this one once through before. Because mm-hmm. uh, apparently this is a something that the Jester King Brewing Company 
does, which yeah. is they have a little bit of a story on all their beers. Mm-hmm. <clears throat> so here we are. The tale of a serial killer. His final victim was cornered in the maze, stocky and draped in silk. The cream wait, wait, wait. Hold on, hold on, hold on. <coughs> Okay. See, oh, shit. <laughs> Already off to a good start. How's that look? Oh, yeah. It's getting darker. Oh, yeah. That's there we are. That's good. Dramatic lighting? Yeah, that's good. <laughs> <laughs> I could use, like, dramatic side lighting. I think that would make it better, but yeah. we got what we got. <clears throat> Are you afraid of the dark? <laughs> Is it? Does it give you enough lighting? No, it's not. It's not powerful <laughs> enough. <laughs> oh, there you go. There you go. Boost it up. Oh, there we are. There we are. <clears throat> Shall I begin anew? Please. <clears throat> the tale of a serial killer. His final victim was cornered in the maze. Stocky and draped in silk. The cream of the crop had been saved for last. The killer huskily whispered into the captive ear, You'll make a fine meal. To his surprise, it popped off with a coarse, Kiss my grits! And a swift punch. Stunned as it ran free, the killer could only cobble together a shucks. Honestly, we don't know if there is a kernel of truth to this story. But we can agree that it's fairly corny. <laughs> Beautiful. Beautiful. Thank you. Thank you. Good job. Good job. That was all that I wanted and more. <laughs> Actually, let me just do this. Um, this is the One Beer and Podcast. <laughs> Thank you. Lost. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know about you guys, but I guess, I guess we're done with COVID protocols. <laughs> guy just put his fucking mouth all over the beer. I'm sorry, we both been vaxxed. It's okay. Now, I mean, I want your mouth all over my beer. Uh, you fuck. <clears throat> I don't care. So. This is the One Baron Podcast, a podcast where two brews crack open a brew, and we see where that one brew takes us. The beginning was a little all over the place, but this is episode 313, and we're glad that you guys are joining us. My name is Marco Dupa, and that nasty bastard as Adam Obesius Rodriguez. What's up, Brewskies? And uh, yeah, like, share, and subscribe everywhere podcasts are sold and or listened to. Uh, we would greatly appreciate it. After the fallout of a couple of episodes ago, <clears throat> we've kind of bottomed back out again <laughs> to getting you know the, the, the amount huge. of uh, yeah attention and likes that we get, which is nice. All of our supporters, we appreciate, <clears throat> and you know we had a feeling that what happens with this with with uh, any kind of uh, controversy like this or any kind of cancel culture thing. It only matters as long as people give it attention. Yeah. I guess, you know what? We could we can talk about the Seth Rogen thing because it's a good segue to get into it. Okay. Let's I, do it. I mean, I get the reason we pre-planned kind of talked about it, right? And I said that we've kind of dragged the rakes over this enough. Yeah. We've talked about cancel culture a lot. Yeah. We've kind of had to based on, you know. The headlines <laughs> yeah. the past two years yeah and our own personal experiences sure i'm not saying that people were trying to cancel us or anything but i am saying that um getting review bombed is a form of trying to cancel somebody sure 
if we were really sensitive, we could have just been like, they don't like it, so forget about yeah, it. Yeah, we could have deleted the video and, and everything. Yeah. Um, Put out an apology. Yeah. Getting that kind of negative attention uh, based on something that you said that a lot of people don't agree with. I mean, maybe we look back on this years from now and go, we're, we, maybe we were wrong that whole time. I, don't, I doubt <laughs> Black it. Superman was really bad. Yeah, Black Superman was a bad idea. Yeah. Um. I told you we're gonna say Black Superman every single episode I hope from now so. on. It's the it's now you guys need to start paying attention. It's the Easter egg of it's one of the Easter eggs <laughs> of the show. So we gotta ha- we gotta just have a counter. Yep. Of Easter. Bing. <clears throat> so, um, I I think that can- cancel culture is this thing that 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 just I I, I the only thing that I want to say about it is this. It, it is as strong as the attention that we give to it, mm-hmm. right? So if you are being canceled, quote unquote, for uh, something wow. that you've said or done, depending on the real severity of it or seriousness of it, you are just dealing with the consequences of your actions versus yeah. you doing something highly controversial and there being a loud minority reacting to that thing and then you going i'm being canceled right, right. when you can still do everything that you wanted and have been doing a, a lot of it's ironically just manipulation of <laughs> of the media itself yeah when people are saying oh the media is after me it's actually a usually a dog whistle to say hey I'm anti these people. Yeah. Please, other people who are anti these people or this idea. Join me. Join me. It's a it's a rallying cry, even if it's just literally, even if it's just one person with a outside of the norm opinion. Yeah. That's agreeing with you and going or disagreeing with you and saying you're stupid. Yeah. I'm a victim now. <laughs> They're victimizing me. Help. I had to get a little bit of that. Mm-hmm. <sighs> That'll puck your butt. Yep. <clears throat> so we bring this up only because Seth Rogen is in the headlines again. It's see, oh, because he's promoting that book. It seems like seems like the guy's been everywhere without a movie. Yeah. And uh, the headlines have basically been that he's like, you know, comedians just need to start accepting that jokes don't age well, and you've got this entire uh, population of people who are just like. I should be able to tell whatever jokes that I want. That's the whole idea of a joke is the irony that's built into the joke. So whoever's being made fun of needs to just understand that it's a joke and it's ironic and I don't mean it. And you just need to toughen up and take a joke. Mm -hmm. Paul F. Tompkins, a professional comedian, he said that the reason that we're going to continue talking about this kind of shit is because there's this entire population of people that think that comedy is solely either punching up or punching down. Mm. Like you have to be making fun of someone to be a comedian. And he's like, that idea is so ludicrous, but there's so many people that hold that as the, what comedy is that will never be able to get past this cancel culture conversation because no one's trying to think outside the box of what comedy can be or what is literally funny. Mm-hmm. When ev- when a lot of people's idea of what's funny is making fun of someone else or something versus yeah. just being funny. It's like mm-hmm. we can't – we'll never get past this conversation because every time you start this conversation, it's like, well, are you punching up or punching down? It's like, why do you have to punch anybody? <laughs> it's, it's true, yeah. You know? That's so good point, yeah. Uh, I mean, that's, that's some comedian's entire persona and style. Yeah. It's like I have to attack something in order to get a laugh. Right. Which isn't necessarily a bad it's thing. It's not a bad I, thing. I, I mean, Roasts I, are awesome. Yeah. I, I feel Jessica like. is awesome. And, and uh, you know, roast well, comedians are usually really good. Patrice O'Neill is a legend. Mm-hmm. I mean, there's plenty of them that. And highly cancelable. Highly cancelable. <laughs> <right? laughs> wildly cancelable. Right. Uh, and yet not canceled. Weird. Yeah. Weird that. I was going to say you can't really get canceled after death, but you can, kind of. Oh, you definitely can. <laughs> people can go back and say, uh-uh. But right. not just him. I mean, people who do his brand of comedy 
all the time. Sure. I mean, I guess with Anthony Jeselnik, for instance, it's built into his image that he says dark shit uh-huh. and all his fans come to his defense anytime somebody says like, oh, you can't make that joke. And people go, it's a joke. Mm-hmm. That's his whole thing. Yeah. But then if most of the population can accept that when it comes to Jeselnik, why is it that there are other jokes that are so cancelable? I say that rhetorically because I don't think that there are. Right. If it's a good joke, it's a good joke. Sure. If people understand inherently that it is a joke, mm-hmm. you will offend people. Yeah. Right? I mean, that's sometimes the point. Right. Is in in the best hands, in the best comedic hands, um, you know, that can be the point and it can lead to a thought provoking point at the end of that joke. Yeah. That makes it worthwhile. Now, if you're dealing with someone who just is really bad at jokes and just says stuff to get a rise out of people, eh, not so much. Yeah. You know, then then that won't last. It won't be funny in the moment either. Yeah. I mean, maybe to some people, maybe like, okay, if there's some hacky comedian who was doing like really bad stereotypical Asian voices in, you know, the 60s. Yeah. Chances are, if, if that's all their shtick was, we're not really hearing about them being lauded as these legends yeah. of comedy. That Well, it, I mean, that just happened with uh, Tony Hinchcliffe. You saw that clip of him introducing yeah. the... Yep. He introduces a, a Asian comedian. Or no, I'm sorry. The comedian introduced him. Mm-hmm. I guess Hinchcliffe was the headliner. Yeah, he opened for him. And, uh, I mean, he comes off stage and just rips into this guy, does a bad Asian accent, and, and just... Just like, it just seemed really like malicious, mean and weird. Yeah, yeah. and uh, and and people were like, "What the fuck? That yeah. was super weird. Like, why? What? That was fucked up. Where'd that come from?" Right. And it was the energy and the spirit of the joke. I don't even know if you can even classify it as a joke. It just was like the attacking thing to say. <laughs> yeah. And uh, but 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 see that I think that that's that's the difference, mm-hmm. right? Like, if there was some kind of, like, funny, nuanced thing that he was doing with that joke, it, it would it would have landed differently yeah. than for him to, like, grab the mic and then just be like, you guys, that fucking guy? Mm-hmm. Am I right? And everyone in the crowd's kind of like, this uh, weird. Yes. You could hear that, like, nervous uh, Kramer, uh, Kramer laughter. Just a, uh, like, are we supposed to be laughing uh, at this? Uh, <laughs> so, um, yeah, uh, Seth Rogen's whole point was that Jokes don't age well. A lot of jokes don't age well. Right. And that comedians need to, instead of complaining and crying about cancel culture, need to just accept the fact that like jokes just don't age well. And you just keep writing new material. You 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 write for the times. You right. Know? There's still highly successful comedians who do controversial jokes. It's just I'm I'm not against dark humor and dark comedians saying really fucked up shit. Yeah. I am against those same comedians who are incredibly successful complaining about oh man, you can't say this that and the other thing anymore and it's like but you're still doing it. You're still Yeah. saying those things that you're telling other people that you can't say. I I mean <laughs> not to not to speak on the god yet again, Joe Rogan. <laughs> you're the god. Famously again. G-O-D. Infamously Again, yeah, makes headlines again. Making headlines again about saying, oh, yeah, the straight white men will not be able to open their mouths at all ever again. No, I'm serious. It's going to happen. Oops, You'll see. It's gonna happen. Watch. 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 You watch. You all watch. Mm-hmm. You'll see. As my platform continues <laughs> right. to grow, as as Spotify deletes episodes that they feel are are I don't know against their morals right. and he doesn't give up. See, here's the thing. You guys you guys need to pick a different hero. Please. All right? There are others out there. Yeah. <laughs> Other people you can idolize. Joe Rogan does not give a fuck about cancel culture, about being this trailblazer, about even really I don't even sometimes I don't even think he gives a fuck about the person that he's talking to at the moment. Mm-hmm. This motherfucker he cares about his bottom line. He's yeah. making money, and I think that's the and U- only and UFC. And I don't. He don't care about that either, though. I mean, he's been 
hedging on retiring for the past like 10 years. Yeah. Every time he his his uh, contract comes back up, he's like, I'll keep doing it, but I got to do less. Like, I think at some point he's only going to call shows that are in Austin, Texas. That's it. I think you're right, but I think he, if you look in his eyes, he still loves it. He <laughs> does. You see a knockout and the reaction shots of him and the entire, like, uh, commentator crew. Yeah, so, yeah, right, definitely. But I, I, my counter argument to that is all these people who I really, the thing is, I've noticed that when I watch UFC fights, I don't really listen to... I listen to the commentating if somebody says something really outlandish, and I'm like, what are you talking about? (laughs) Shut up. Or egotistically, if I think or say something, and then I am uh, validated, Ah. I'm like, see, I knew that. Mm -hmm. I said it. I could do that. You guys heard me say that. I could do that. Uh, Or even, even better, if I say something, then the announcer says it, then the fighter does it, and uh, then someone that I'm with goes, you called that. And I'm like, <laughs> yeah, I did. I watch martial arts. Yeah. But I don't notice this, but apparently this has become a thing that Joe, like uh, he's, he gets criticized a lot now. Mm. A lot of people are saying like uh, his most recent calls for the past, like four or five pay-per-views. People are like, he just seems like he's losing a out stuff. of it. Yeah. yeah. Like he's not doing the research anymore. Like he'll, he'll, he'll grab onto a narrative and then that's the thing that he talks about no matter what's happening in the fight. Like a guy will go for a leg kick and seem to injure their leg and then that person doesn't limp or or favor that leg at all and yet Joe just won't let it go. He'll just mm-hmm. be, I mean, I don't know. I don't know if he can post on that leg anymore. He's not going to be able to shoot a straight. If he can't post on that leg, he can't. And it's just like he's not even favoring the leg. What are you talking about? Why are you so – why are you hanging on to this thing? Yeah. Anyway – Maybe I'm wrong. Maybe he still loves the UFC. Maybe I mean, he still loves. The, the thing is, he could love it with all of his heart, but I think the UFC has become his day job. Where when the podcast with the millions upon millions of dollars he got in <laughs> that contract, you know, that's going to take precedence. Yeah. So he's going to pay more attention to that than he does the fights. Yeah. I think it's kind of normal for yeah. a human being to prioritize their main money maker. Sure, but you know, at the at the same time, if he's gonna take a back seat from a technical aspect, because you know, like you said, I haven't really been paying a close attention to his his uh, commentating. Yeah, so I'm not criticizing um, his commentating because I haven't been paying attention to it. Yeah, so. but you know, if if the fans are uh, true and he's been kind of slacking, I think it's in his best interest to call it a day. He might hang it up, focus all on the podcasting and taking supplements yeah listen he has said himself that he doesn't give a shit that spotify is deleting those old episodes yeah and and you know his fans are like oh they deleted the alex jones episode and the my and the milo episode and all this stuff and and joe has said himself he's like i don't give a fuck i don't give a fuck yeah so i don't know if you if that's the sword you want to die on go right ahead but Mm -hmm. It's being handled by a guy who will shake your body off and keep walking. Yeah. Is how I how I see it. Go ahead and, and die on that hill. Yeah. It's fine. Do what you want. He doesn't care. He's gonna roll your corpse he off doesn't of it care. and stay at the top of it. Yep. <clears throat> so anyway. Right. There goes another five down votes. <laughs> <laughs> we criticized Daddy Rogan. Uh huh. We talked about cancel culture, but in a way that fucking Oh, the liberals it's consequences of your actions. There's no such thing as cancel culture. Oh, my butt hurts. <laughs> so, I, don't, I don't know. Sorry. I feel like I'm just digging this show into the ground. I mean, I'm right there with you. <laughs> I'll take it. I'll take your down votes if you disagree. Yeah. All right. <clears throat> but at least comment to tell us why you hate our guts. There you go. That's yeah. it. Yeah. Thank like, you. like, <laughs> did you see that, that comment from the, the guy who reviews food from his toilet no <laughs> <laughs> no that's all it said he was just like good episode guys yeah that's right i review food from my toilet nice <laughs> i think it's called toilet bowl reviews or something like that okay shout out to toilet bowl reviews dog <laughs> toilet bowl we reviews. appreciate the listen <laughs> yeah man so oh by the way shout out to steve at red light <clears throat> that's where i picked this up and um 
I guess it switch gears a little bit on this. Uh, we have we've been doing this is episode three hundred thirteen, right? We've done hundreds and hundreds of beers, and we don't really split the show up into seasons. We just keep going, you know, long, episodic, like a soap opera. <laughs> it just keeps going. It just keeps going. Yeah. There's no season breaks. But I say I would like I think that this most recent iteration of the show is a different thing than what it used to be. Mm. And I think that the beers that we've been doing, you know, save for a handful are on another level than what we've done in the past. <clears throat> I could just say, for instance, that like, I don't remember the last time I just popped into Publix and yeah. grabbed the, the weirdest looking label or like mm -hmm. something that we haven't done before. The newest right? like InBev. Right. So I think the, the way to take this to the next level is I think that for the rest of the year at least, we need to be on the search for something that we can legitimately give a six out of six. The search for six. The search for six. Okay. Because it's been it's years. Been. It's been. Years since we've given a beer a six out of six. Yeah, I'd have to look up the last time we did. We would, yeah. I, yeah, we'd have to go back into the It's archives. been that long, yeah. We've given 5.5s. Yep. But no sixes. Recently. And maybe some of those beers deserved sixes. Maybe. That got five and a halves. Yeah. And we're just too gun shy yeah to give something a six out of six it's a very final thing because you give something a four four and a half and a year from now we can come back and drink it again and be like you know what i feel like that was actually a five mm -hmm. my my taste buds have changed or you can lower the score yeah i feel like if i give something a perfect score that it has to stand the test of time it sure. has to be a beer consistently good every time i have it i have to go this is the best this is at least one of the best things i've ever had yeah the only thing that I can think of that I have given a six out of six is the left hand nitro milk stout. I know that I gave that a six out of six and uh, I still think that. Yeah. And so, but that's like the only thing that I can think is like consistently that good and deserve that score. Yeah. And mind the delirium tremens, which delirium tremens. we actually revisited not that long ago mm -hmm. and is still a six. Yep. So, we're on the search for six. Okay. We got to find something that really... Oh, I bring that up because Steve believes that this is a contender. This is a uh, um, a farmhouse that could be a six out of six. So you're just going to have to wait. Yep. <laughs> yep, 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 yep. <clears throat> you're going to have to wait till the end of the show. So I just wanted to mention that. Okay. Yeah. <coughs> Excuse me. Um... So, Fast and the Furious, I'm super excited. It's coming out soon. Yeah, reviews are coming in. Mm -hmm. It's looking like it's pretty solid. Yeah, and uh, I mean, at this point, you see a trailer. You see the trailer on on TV, and everyone has one of two reactions. It's like they made another one of those stupid <laughs> fucking movies. They made another one of those stupid fucking movies. Yeah. So, all the actors are now on the. Uh, campaign trail yeah. if you will because that's what it feels like now when they do these when they go press junkets yeah it's not a press junket anymore it's a campaign trail they have to be they have to be out there they're campaigning for this movie and in no market more so than the chinese market are you campaigning as opposed to promoting yeah. a movie and no one has learned this lesson better than old John, John Cena, Cena, who was in the news recently because he was promoting Fast 9 or Furious 9 or whatever it's called. F9. F9. Yeah. Sure. <laughs> F9. Play it safe. And uh, he made the boo-booest of all boo-boos <laughs> in China <laughs> by calling Taiwan a country. Now, if you don't know, I vaguely knew what this whole thing was about. And I looked it up and I was like, oh, okay. This is a very complex issue. Mm -hmm. Like most things like this, like if, um, like I'm sure you guys have uh, been paying attention to that whole uh, conflict in the Middle East. Yeah. You know, 
that whole that whole that whole that little that uh, little uh, that little chestnut bag of skittles. Yeah, and that's a pretty complex issue. <clears throat> and so is this. Yeah. Apparently, Chinese people, not see this is a lot of research. <laughs> okay, not the republic, or is it the Republic of China, the People's Republic of China? Yeah, yeah, the Communist Party. They're like Taiwan's not a country, right? It's part it's of part of China. China. Yeah. What I don't understand about that idea is like, why are they so angry about it? Um, I don't know. I, I think there's a lot of anger whenever you're in a communist country. <laughs> it's, <laughs> it's it's fueled <laughs> on the uh, the people, the workers, and just absolute rage. Just rage. <laughs> yeah. So if you if you're uh, not from if you're not from around there and you're promoting anything in the People's Republic of China you are making a stance you're taking a pretty big stance by calling Taiwan a country and by saying things like China needs democracy, mm-hmm. Hong Kong should be free, things like that. Your president looks like Winnie the Pooh. <clears throat> Ooh buddy you really want this show to get cancelled don't you? If we get canceled by China, I'd be happy to oh, be. It'd be awesome. It would be awesome. So, John learned this the hard way by um, promoting the movie and saying that Taiwan, the country, <clears throat> would be would be able to see the movie first, I think is what he said, right? He said, uh, Taiwan is the first country that can watch the film. <laughs> Man. That's all it took. And they let loose on yeah. this guy so I, i'm curious what what would be the chinese government approved statement about what taiwan is is it like a city state is it a region of china that's a good question what would their preferred Providence? nomenclature be yeah how could he have avoided that I guess he could have said place. Yeah. Taiwan's the first place that we'll be able to. Yeah, because people were mad that he just called it a country. Not that he acknowledged that Taiwan exists, but that they were right. like one. There were people who were like, look, just say it's not a country. Yeah. That's all you have to do. Just say it's not well, a country. Because in, in his his apology that he, right. he filmed. So in, wait. Okay. So let's backtrack for uh-huh. a second. He gets in trouble for this. And then. I don't know, mere seconds after he got caught up in this controversy. He Wait releases, a damn minute. <laughs> he releases a apology video where he's speaking in what amounts to passable conversational Mandarin. Mandarin. Yeah. He's apparently studied Mandarin for years. I Yeah. I, I mean, here's where the wrestling nerd comes out. I knew this mm-hmm. uh, because he, he, he knows – that to be a huge star, he has to break into that market. Yeah. And he learned Mandarin, passable Mandarin, yeah. so that he could break into that market easier, so that it, he can go over there and promote movies and be a star over there. Yeah. He knows that it's the largest market. Yeah. So when he was transitioning out of wrestling, he was like, what's a good thing to do? He spent a lot of time there. Apparently, he wrestled there for a little bit. Mm-hmm. He developed some move that is a, 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 it's basically a spinning back fist. It's terrible. <laughs> Uh, the communist hammer, <laughs> the red so, scare. I knew that he, I knew that he could do it. That's good. <laughs> <laughs> I knew that he could do it. And I, and when I saw the video, I wasn't as surprised as everybody else who was like, what the fuck? Yeah. Not only is he apologizing, but he's apologizing in Mandarin. Right. Very strange. So that's what he does. He releases this video and in the apology video, he doesn't acknowledge what he did wrong. Mm hmm. And he doesn't backtrack what he said about Taiwan being a country, which I right. find very interesting. Yeah. Because what's he doing there? Both sides of the fence. Uh-huh. He's hedging a little bit, yeah, right? Yeah. Because uh, apparently the re- the uh, response to his apology has been pretty mixed mm-hmm. in China. Right. I mean, and with supporters of Taiwan having you know, their own independence and stuff like that. They were like... Thanks. Wait, what? <laughs> uh, uh, we are. We do exist. Wait. 
Huh? Yeah, because people are still saying you didn't say that Taiwan is China and not a country. Mm -hmm. But then you have other people on the other side saying you said too much. You shouldn't have apologized (laughs) at all, uh, which is the camp I'm part of. Yeah, that he shouldn't have apologized. He shouldn't have apologized. No. I understand money talks and money can apparently stick a hand up your ass and make you talk yeah. uh, for the sake of the production. And I'm sure he had tons of pressure from the studio saying, hey, you messed up. It's okay. Put out an apology video. Oh, you know they got on his ass about that. Yeah. So uh, I get that. But at the same time, <coughs> you're, you're bowing down to a country that is actively committing human rights violations mm. they have concentration camps for concentration the Uyghurs camps. Concentration camps. Uh, so you know I get that's that's who butters your bread but I'm not as as a person who cares about that kind of stuff I'm not going to bow down to that mm-hmm. like I'm just I'm not going to understand if that's going to lead to people losing money and i'm sure if it came down to it they would go well your cause you're you're costing all these people money yeah it's not just about you but you know so be it i'm sorry yeah you know don't put me on the press junket then right i don't care right like just some things are bigger than money and i feel like that stance is important enough to take a stand against and maybe he he did the best he could in that situation and said i'm not gonna say it but i'm gonna hint towards it and that's what we got with, with this apology that was kind of vague you know what i think happened i think that john no of uh, no offense i'm not calling him dumb this isn't like an attack on his intelligence but i don't think that he was fully aware of what he did in his original statement no i think he Understood as most people do in in our country that Taiwan is a country, right? Yeah. In America, someone has to kind of explain to you, like, "Hey, man, that's a whole bag of worms that you right. don't want to get into." Because otherwise, we're taught that Taiwan is a country. Sure, there's Taiwanese people. There's a language. There's, it's like a whole it's thing. Its own thing, yeah. <clears throat> and up until, you know. You get a little bit older and you understand the conflict out there. I mean, I really, I, I didn't even make any kind of connection between Taiwan and China. Yeah. To well, me, that, Taiwan I mean, was like an island off of, it was like Japan. It was like by itself. Its own thing, yeah. In fact, it was part of Japan for a little while. Mm. I, I found that out in my research. Oh, look at that. Um, so Wikipedia, I th- folks. <laughs> I, found, I, I feel like in his original statement that he wasn't making a political statement. No, he, he was absolutely wasn't. Yeah. I, I have zero doubt that he actually was trying to make a stance on their political issues going on. Yeah. None. But I'll give him only the slightest amount of credit that I will give him, which is that someone explained to him what was going on, and he goes, oh, fuck. But then he's like, but wait, it's fucked up. Yeah. I don't want to walk that back. Right. And the studio's like, well, you got to walk something, motherfucker. You got to walk <laughs> something. Yeah. So then he apo- he does what he does. He pulls right. his Mandarin trick out of his yeah, back yeah. pocket and he apologizes, but he keeps it vague mm-hmm. on purpose. Yeah, yeah. Which I give him credit for being, you know. But at the same time, I don't give him any. I, I have to take. I give him the smallest amount of credit sure, because, sure. yeah, he gets partial credit. If you're if 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 you're gonna stand on something, stand on it. Yeah. And uh, uh, these these uh, honestly, dude. At the end of the day, we're adults, and if you are, if you are an adult, you gotta stop looking for celebrities to be your heroes. All of them yeah. are going to betray you. They're all just, at the end of the day, they're all just concerned about their bottom line, man. They're all, all of them. If you take the money out of their pocket, they will backtrack. They will walk back. They will, even all of this Black Lives Matter, Black Lives Matter stuff, all of the political statements that are being made recently, all of this pro this, anti that. If you told one of these 
actors or celebrities that you will never work in this town again if you don't take that BLM out of your Twitter profile. Mm-hmm. I bet you'd see it disappear quietly. Yeah. And, uh, you know, I'm sure they have the PR <laughs> machine that would uh, show you something shiny mm-hmm. to distract mm-hmm. you yeah, look, yeah, look from, look from the here. fact that that was happening. I was actually just looking up because I, I thought I remembered this happening, but in the new Top Gun movie, uh, they apparently removed the Taiwanese flag from Maverick's jacket <laughs> that he's wow. wearing because he used to have that patch on his his jacket yeah so some people are speculating that they removed it for the chinese market there's no other reason not to right or there's no other reason to do to do that yeah so you know it we've talked about this before but china is like a a a money-making machine for hollywood oh now they're the number one yeah 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 i mean that was market is the biggest a long time coming so uh i mean it's unfortunate and i think that there has to be some studios that stand up to the pressures of, you know, this this brutal uh, regime. Regime, basically. yeah. Um, but, but there won't be Adam, and that's the problem. There won't be. Well, like we said last episode, it's all about the money. Yeah, yeah. If it if it becomes in these studios' best interests to stand up to China. Then they will do it. But they won't. Financially. There, there's no way for the U.S. market alone and even the U.S. market combined with the international market excluding China to make that worth their while. No. Because the kind of numbers that these movies do now, it's so funny thinking of like having this conversation now when a couple years ago we were, there was all these people, us included, speculating on like when movie theaters die, and they will. What's going to happen to those numbers? Not only are movie theaters not going to die. Right. The kind of numbers that these movies do and will do once everything opens back up. Dude, they're, they'll, movie theaters are going to be packed. I think they're going to be packed to the brim. Yeah. And the kind of money, especially over there, that these movies do. Like we were talking about like, oh, man, when, how many times is a movie going to crack 100 million? You know, like it's that like that's the golden blockbuster number. You got to crack 100 million. Now these movies are being made for two, three, three fifty, yeah. half a million dollars to make a fucking movie. Yep. Uh, Amazon just paid, uh, what was it, like two hundred thirty-five million dollars for the rights to the rest of the James Bond movies. Oh yeah, for uh, uh, was it MGM or yeah, it was, yeah. It was MGM, right? Yeah. So uh, yeah, it, like you said, it, it, there's no way. F- They'll never be able to stand up. It's just too big of a money maker. Yeah. It's too big of a bank to turn money down from. Yeah, and I mean, I I guess the the escape from that is going to be the independent market, the independent movies, uh, where you know we won't have to worry about you know them having to bend the knee to the People's Republic of China because they're not spending <clears throat> half a billion dollars to make their movie. Yeah, and that's n- not the market that they're going to sell in. Streaming services, yeah, streaming not having to worry too. about um, selling to them. If 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 these studios could start making their money back on streams alone, then you'll start seeing them stand up because they don't have to worry about losing that money. But then at the same time, it's like again, you know, we've we talked. I don't know if we talked about this on the show, but it's like if you can continue to make money, you're just going to make. Money. Sure. And I just, I, the thing is, I don't think we're going to ever see a multi, like hundreds of millions of dollar spectacle movie that isn't in one way or another kind of tipping their hat to China. Right. I mean, maybe they can make multiple versions, but even that seems to be an issue nowadays where the fact that a version of the film is being shown outside of China that may have uh, a depiction of, China or the Chinese people that the People's Republic doesn't like uh, is an issue. Like, I don't know. That's kind of scary to me. I don't like that. Yeah, I don't like that affecting our media and essentially Hollywood becoming potentially a uh, a place where just Chinese propaganda is is being peddled out. Yeah, you know, with the with the facade of of it being an all American production yeah i don't know it's weird i'm i'm uh, you know it 
I, I don't want to say that the people of China are bad. That's not what I'm saying here, but just this. It's just the people's republic. people's republic <laughs> is, 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 is small difference, but big difference. But big difference. Yeah. So I don't know. I don't like that. I don't like that. Uh, 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 messing with my movies mm-hmm. is all I'm trying to say. Basically, Cena, you're a coward. <laughs> well, no, that that's the other thing I, I wanted to bring up too is that a lot of people are coming down on Cena. I think rightfully so, but he's a by all accounts a good guy. Like he's he's committed nah, him. Fuck him. <laughs> he, he's committed himself to you know giving to charities. He's committed and, to be a sheep. Yeah. Wake up. Wake up. Can you see this, Cena? Um. But saw no. his fucking money flying out of his pocket, <laughs> and he was like, "Oh, <laughs> you, uh, you can see me." Actually, yeah, I went full Mick Rooney. You can see me. Oh, you you went full Mick. No, Rooney? no, he did. Okay, <laughs> no, I I started Mickey I like, Rooney. You, <laughs> oh, my impression's Ooh. not very good. Well, it's oh, not it's very do unflattering. That. I'm not gonna do that. Let's not do that. Let's not uh, do that's that. It's a hacky joke, and I'm yes, not gonna yes, do that yes, because it's terrible. That joke won't land. Even today, <laughs> <laughs> no. I was gonna say it won't age well, but uh, no, it it it's not no, well. It's not gonna stick the landing. It's today, not well. Mm-mm. It's unwell. So, yeah, they they're they're coming down on him, and 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 you were saying he seems like a nice guy, but yeah, is there? Is there well, some no, just kind of qualifier uh, caveat yeah. out there. You're gonna give him? no, no. I was just I was just saying it it it's important to remember that he, I mean, generally seems like a good guy who's committed to, um, I mean, making good in the world yeah as best he can outside of this situation so i think it's it's a little much to i don't know fully condemn him for this because you know like you said too it seemed like he kind of did the best he could in the situation to yeah. appease everyone uh i just wish <clears throat> he could have been a bit stronger on uh not backing this regime yeah i mean that's that's the reason that i that i keep harping on you know stop uh, um, uh, glorifying these people that you see on TV, not because they're bad people. I mean, most of them probably are, but <laughs> the good ones, even the good ones, aren't people that you should be idolizing. They're just people. So, at the very least, Cena didn't know, and he's doing his best. Yeah. At worst, they explained everything to him, and he was like, well, we're trying to make as much money as we can, mm-hmm. so I'll walk that back. Either way, the end result is the same. Yeah. A very muddled, mixed message that one person can take one thing from and another person can take another thing from, and then he gets to just tiptoe backwards mm-hmm, mm-hmm. and then continue the press junket over here right, right. and act like that shit didn't happen. And, you know, I think give it a month's time, people won't remember this. And that's... Kind of brings us all the way back, right? Yep. Because can- cancel culture doesn't exist no. when it comes to things like that. I mean, the the only thing that could affect this is if suddenly either China or the U.S. were like, we're just not going to watch this movie and, you know, responded by not giving them money. But I think that the way that you that that we that celebrities respond is just by not acknowledging it after you do that you do the thing you apologize for the thing and then you just igno- you just don't acknowledge it and just yeah. pretend like it didn't happen Aziz Ansari has come back season three of Master of None mm-hmm. um, is, is he in it no though? I, so he I, makes I a cameo that. in it I didn't watch it um, not because he's well no because he's not in it is the reason I haven't watched it yep. yet people I are saying it's really good yeah and I will you know here's okay Maybe we could just we could probably end it with this. I okay. Guess. Yeah. So season three comes out and it's a special edition of the show. It's five episodes long, and uh, it's it's all Lena Waithe's character, um, Denise. So it's her relationship with her wife. I I think it's set a couple years after the end of season two. Okay. She's married. They uh they got a house together. They're and and basically what you're watching is like the slow death of their relationship. Is this marriage story? Yeah, kind of. <laughs> yeah, kind of. Okay. But with two queer black women. All right. And um, I I don't think I spoiled anything because I haven't watched it, so I don't I don't know. 
Yeah. I don't think that I've given anything away by saying that. I think that's pretty much in, in the, the trailer. trailer and everything. Mm-hmm. So it's <clears throat> pretty revolutionary in that it's a show based it, – it's a romance based solely around um, black women and queer relationships mm-hmm. that isn't made – I guess the best way to say this is it isn't made for the male gaze. You see a uh, lot of gaze like stare, not <laughs> not gaze. Yes, yes, yes. <laughs> yes. Yeah. Um thank you. Yeah. <clears throat> because you see there's been a lot of um media made based around um lesbian relationships in particular mm-hmm. that still kind of I guess hinges on how sexy this can be. Right. And not to say that this isn't sexy, but it it's pretty unsexy. You're watching like a really a, a sad regular relationship yeah. too. It's not just this like porno. Right. You know, uh, uh, designed for men. Right. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. And so um but I also haven't seen it marketed as like a queer show, you know? Th- yes, that was that was another part of my point. Was yeah. that it it's the normalization of the relationship. Sure. It's not. It's a love story. Right. That, and that's it. End of story. It's just a love story, which is pretty revolutionary. Yeah, it's great. And pretty cool to see. At the same time, I'm not going to sit here and pretend like I don't want to know what happens to Dev, mm-hmm. Aziz's character. And I'm disappointed. I hope that season four, they come back. But it feels yeah. like, I don't know. He seems to be happy with how it was left. Hmm. hanging in the air he seems to be happy with being behind the camera right kind of taking a step back i don't know maybe i'm wrong i think regardless this was the smart move uh for this season Hmm. and uh you know he may be tipping a toe back into it uh, seeing how people respond to a new season of the show even if it doesn't specifically because it doesn't involve him uh, as the main star Uh uh-huh and then maybe he'll be back for the next season. Or, you know, maybe this takes off and he realizes uh, maybe he can be a floating, like, side character in yeah. all this. And we you can pick up his story in bits and pieces, but have somebody else have the limelight of the show. Or you could uh, you could focus on um, uh, Eric's character, mm-hmm. uh, Tim and Eric's character. Well, I guess not Tim and Eric. <laughs> not Tim. Just Eric, Eric Warheim, right? Like, yeah. Just, yeah, I think so. Um, the reason that I bring that back up though is because like Aziz is a person who, not not uh, he didn't commit such a cancelable offense as some of these other celebrities, but there was a there was a pretty good number of of people who, um, were done with him after everything that right. happened with him. We yeah. talked about that. Yeah, yeah. At the time it happened. <sighs> yeah, and then he he gives it a little bit of time. I think he reacted in only the way that somebody could a person trying to salvage their career while also trying to react in a responsible and smart way that appeased to everyone Mm -hmm. which was letting time kind of heal wounds uh apologizing being being sincere in the apology accepting what he had done Mm -hmm. and then you give it a little bit of time and then you do a stand-up special (laughs) Yeah, and <laughs> it's like I think some of the uh, initial backlash against him was a little bit of what happened with Ellen that we were talking about, where it's like he was propped up as this relationship kind of guru, you know? Yes, he was the ultimate nice guy. Modern dating nice guy. Yeah. And then, you know, we find out... He's not so nice. Yeah, some shady stuff happened, mm-hmm. and suddenly that image is completely shattered. Yeah. Uh, and if he didn't have that image, I feel like it wouldn't have gone down the same way it did. Right. Uh, to that extremity. Um, Honestly, I, I hate to say this, but maybe the girl that he hooked up with wouldn't have been so, I guess, taken aback by his actions had she gone into it thinking, you know, his image is a reckless, aggressive guy. Right. I need to be, like, if she's not into that, don't get involved with sure. somebody like that. Sure, yeah. Versus... In involving herself with somebody who she thought was going to be more of a sensitive, understanding person right. who turned out to not be that. The perception, yeah. Or, or yeah, or being somebody uh, perceptive when it comes to 
uh, physical interactions with yeah. somebody or intimate interactions with somebody. Right. So that definitely plays a factor. So um, he's back now. He did a stand-up special, which was successful. The show's back. It's getting rave reviews. Um, anytime he pops up on the internet, people are like, when's Master of None? When's Master of None? Yep. You don't see anybody talking about what happened before. He's essentially the uh, steerer of his own ship again. Yeah. Like, I think I think you're right. I think there was a conscious decision to go, how can we ease back into the spotlight while also highlighting a really good story mm-hmm. and doing something creative with this show that people won't see coming? Yeah. And also gauge people's interest in me yeah. as a creative. Yeah. And I think it's gone off without a hitch. I will say that I think he bided enough time and built up enough goodwill that he could have just come back and I sure. don't think anybody would have cared. Sure. I, I, I think I think he's uh, his image is essentially rehabilitated at this point. Yeah. People are not only that, I think people are hungry for more of his content. I feel like at least the internet and comment section seems to feel like he was kind of given a bad hand in that situation. Yeah. And he's sort of served his time on the internet to, right, right. to, to recover from this fully. And we're ready to accept him again. Right. Um, so, yeah, I mean, I, but that just leads me to think it's so much more impressive that he and his team can come up with what I understand to be a very good season of TV. Yeah. That's a, a step away from what the show originally was. Yeah. So I'm impressed by that. That's uh that's kind of a flex. Yeah. So, you know, if they they come back to his storyline or they move on to making it almost like an anthology series of different relationships in each season, you know, it could be interesting either way. Yeah. But I it, think the people are there for it. There is a lot of potential for that show. Yeah. And then uh I I also just want to mention as far as canceled comedians are concerned, Chris D'Elia, he's back. Yeah. His show's back, and obviously he doesn't have the same amount of uh, sponsors that he had before, which yeah. is why, like, every other, every third episode, I think, is on Patreon or every other episode's on Patreon. But, I mean, he's he's essentially, like, yes, he lost some big roles, right? He lost out on Army of the Dead. Um, Watched it last night. And? bad (laughs) really it pains me to say this because i desperately want to like Zack snyder movies yeah (laughs) because he seems like a genuinely cool interesting guy yeah i like the guy yeah army of the dead was potential up here the movie was down here really it felt like it was written for and by a 12 year old not in a good way yeah overly self-serious it's amazon yeah speaking of china um it's overly self-serious its plot is dumb and the worst offense of all mm. i'm sorry mini one real in because i i feel he did about this because yep. i love the zombie genre i love what he did with dawn of the dead um it does nothing with its pr- the, the promise of its premise yeah it's not a good heist movie. Mm. Uh, it's not a good zombie movie. It's a, mm. more than anything. It's a semi coherent action movie, mm. but I mean, the best I can say about it is Batiste is good. I like him in a starring role yeah. as a big action guy. Uh, Tig Notaro is a terrible actor, but Somehow still a lot of fun in that role. Yeah. So I want to see her in more stuff. Okay. Anyway, that's my soapbox on Army of the Dead. Well, to (laughs) piggyback off of that, thank you. I'm going to watch it just because, of. I mean, everything you just said Sure. makes me want to watch it even more. Yeah. Tig Notaro was slotted in uh, uh, to take over Chris D'Elia's role once Mm -hmm. he was kicked off the movie. And even that short clip that I saw of them, of Batista recruiting her. Yeah in the movie was so stilted (laughs) and oddly paced Mm -hmm. that it was like, Oh, they're clearly 
not in the same room. No, no. It's no. clearly done. Yeah. It's clearly cut together. Yeah. And she's clearly. I like Tig Notaro. Mm-hmm. I like her comedy. She looks really cool in the role. Like she looks like she fits in that world. Her acting's terrible. Her performance is, to me, having been a fan of Dalia, pretty clearly her just doing Dalia. Mm-hmm. Now say what you will about Dalia, in that role, he probably would have been bad too, because of just yeah. the mood and feel of it and that I don't think he's that good of an actor either. Yeah. Uh but that's what it looks like to me. Yeah. Her mannerisms from that clip and his mannerisms, it seems like she's just doing I agree. What yeah. The, you it, know. It's like deadpan but I'm saying weird stuff. Yeah. 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 So, uh he lost out on that role, which was probably a big deal. I mean, on his podcast he talked about it like all the time. Yeah. Um, how much he wanted to be in an action movie. He got to finally be in one, and then for this shit to happen, and they fucking kick him off of one. Mm-hmm. Not def- not babying him or, or coddling him. It's not like he, you know, he fucking deserved to get kicked oh, off. Oh, boo hoo. But, uh, I mean, he's back now. Yeah. And other than, uh, uh, you know, probably a little bit of money here and there, it's, it seems like he never left. Well, the thing is, he came back, and within a week of that, another allegation came out. Which, oh, I didn't even see that. <laughs> yeah, it pumped the brakes on things a bit. Obviously, he just kept rolling anyway. Yeah. And I haven't seen any updates on that story. So, you know. He still does almost the same numbers that he did before he took, before all this stuff came out. Yeah. I looked at his YouTube numbers and he's still doing almost the same exact numbers. I mean, when he came back and put out like an apology video or like not an apology, but like an acknowledgement video, kind uh-huh. of testing the waters or whatever. I mean, I think. Oh yeah, I mean, people. I'm pretty sure he cracked a milli on that. People will be there for the, uh, even if they don't like him, they'll they'll watch that video. Yeah. But I watched it. I did too. What he was uh, exactly trying to, um, yeah. Curiosity, but um, I don't know. I feel like it's going to be a test to see next year if people are still showing out in the same numbers. I mean, I think they're they're fucking showing up for man. I'm just I'm just looking at it right now. Let's see. Mm. There. <laughs> no, I mean, they're, they're, is that a word? They're, 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 they're um, like uh, they're they're below what like big big podcasts do, which is you know big big us. podcasts on YouTube. Yeah, us yeah. us for instance, right. like. The kind of numbers we do, it's below that. Yeah. Okay. Big, big, big podcasts on 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 YouTube will do anywhere from eight to one mil, right? But yep. it's got to be like a really funny, like really entertaining episode, or like a crossover event kind sure. of thing, or like a big guest. They usually hover around eight to a mil. That's a big episode. Right. Joe used to do a a, a mil easily. Yeah. Um. What I've seen from like average numbers hover around four to six. Okay. Moderately successful podcasts hover around one to three. Mm-hmm. And his is, I mean, he's cracking four, five, 386, 325, 320. Um, and these are just, that's just a clip. One, just a clip, just a five minute clip did 100,000. Mm. His episodes hover around two to two to five. Okay. So, I mean, he's... he's Still has an audience. Yeah. Yeah. Easily. Right. So, uh, I don't know. I All that rambling to say that cancel culture doesn't exist. Okay. All Drop right. Drop the mic. Drop the mic. <laughs> let's, uh, let's review this beer and get the fuck out of here. Right. So, this is from... Jester King of the Lagered Farmhouse Beer, brews, brewed out of uh, Austin, Texas. Um, there's there's a lot. Uh, I I would I would um, ask you guys if you're interested in something like this to really kind of look this up and do the research on this beer um, because the process that goes into making something like this is really interesting. Um, it's not your run of the mill farmhouse. I would suggest 
reading up on it. If you find it in stores, definitely just take a look at like the process of it. Excuse me. You have to kind of start appreciating some of these things as opposed to just going, you know, is it a sour beer? Is it this? Is it that? Is it like there's a whole entire thing that goes into it that gives you a better understanding and a better appreciation of these things once you have that. So I say all that to ask, Obi, what'd you think? It's a very interesting beer. Mm-hmm. Um, complex is what I'd say. Uh, there's a lot going on there. And uh, <clears throat> I feel like I'm getting a lot of um, a lot of almost like orange peel. Yeah, yeah. Like a, a or bi- grapefruit. Yeah, like a bitter citrusy kind of uh, uh, thing going on. Mm-hmm. Which I am personally a fan of, um, but it's also not very heavy. It's pretty light. Uh, I mean, five point five percent. It's not a super heavy hitter, mm-hmm. um, which I appreciate about this kind of beer. Um, all that being said, would I go back for it if I'm in the mood for something light but something complex? I think yes. Um, so I'm glad I tried it. Is it my favorite? No. Uh, I respect the the six out of six that this would get. Yeah. Uh, and other palettes. <laughs> but uh, for me, it's it's probably hovering around a four and a half. Yeah. Yeah. <clears throat> I'd say I'd have to agree with you there. Pretty much the same. Pretty much the same. <sighs> it, it's I. I I. Uh, I do like it, and it's 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 built. I'm building up. I'm building up the 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 taste for farmhouse mm-hmm. lambics, sours, things like that. But uh, it's just I, I don't know. I mean, I guess we're grading it on a, a metric of of drinkability, which is a good which is the metric that we usually grade on. And how much of this could you really have? How many times could you really go back to this? If we're sh- if we had a couple of other people who were fans of this style of beer and we just bought like a couple of bottles at like a, you know, the table of us and we're having a good time. We just mm-hmm. had some bottles come over and you just had a glass or two of it. I could do that. Yeah. <clears throat> Excuse me. Just, just getting this myself and just having a couple of rounds of this by myself. Ah, I don't know how many of these I could do. It seems like a good beer to maybe pair with like a fish or something, yeah. you know, like to, to pair with food. It's, it's complex enough that there's a lot in that palate. That I'd like to to combine with other flavors. It smells like it would go well with fish tacos. <laughs> so a unanimous four and a half. Yes, sir. For the Jester King. Yes, sir. Lager Farmhouse. You think we got it? I know we got it. Yeah, I think we got a lot of it. Yeah. Well, if Obi says we got it, then we got it. Uh, this has been the One Beer and Podcast for myself. Marco Dupa for Adam Obesius Rodriguez. Yeah, boy. Thank you guys for listening. Like, share, and subscribe. Drink delicious beer. And always, always, always have a beautiful evening. We love you. Mm. <coughs> <coughs> That's okay.